What is good, Greg Gang? Now today, I have some pretty bad news. We've been hit again, and hit by a predator. And I know that this year we've had a lot of problems with predators, especially coons and possums, but now we've went into a whole new level of predators. They're a whole lot worse than coons, okay? What we've ran into is a fox. Red fox to be exact. So here's how it went down. Yesterday, my neighbor, not very far from me at all, he has chickens as well, and yesterday he spotted a red fox trying to eat his chickens. And he had to go out there and chase it with a stick for it to run away. And the red fox, guys, I'm just gonna be honest, in my opinion, I think that red fox are like the number one smartest predator for chickens. I mean, they're not as strong as a coyote, but they're a whole lot smarter than a coyote, in my own opinion. And they're definitely a whole lot quicker than a coon. Now, for you gray gangsters that have been with my channel for a long time, you'll know that in the last two years, we've had a lot of problems with particularly exactly red fox. And in the last two years, red fox have been responsible for 23 of our chickens. And that is an insane amount. Let's just say that each chicken is worth $5. 23 chickens, that's $115. That's a lot of money, especially for a fox to be running around with it in its mouth. But here comes the problem with red fox. You can't just go out there and put dog food and a honey in a dog proof trap and catch a fox. They're a whole lot smarter than that. You have to go out and you have to set traps in a special type of trap. This kind of trap, a steel foot trap. The big old old reliables, guys. If we get one caught in here, he ain't going nowhere. This is about three, four pounds of steel right here. This is the true traps. But lucky for me, I've had quite a lot of experience with traps like this and red fox. Over the last four or five years, I've been trapping quite a bit. And I used to trap a whole lot more before YouTube. And I've caught plenty of red foxes in my day, and I'm definitely ready for this challenge. I caught a red fox right on this same exact trail in the same exact spot we're gonna set it this year. But anyways, guys, we're gonna set two traps today. One right here, one on the other side of the mountain. We have to get this guy, cause if not, he will literally wipe us out. We won't have any chickens left if I don't do something about this. So I'm gonna set y'all down on the tripod and I'm about to get to work. We're gonna set the trap right there. Okay, let's get down here, guys. I'm gonna try to walk you through like kind of how to set a trap. Not, a, not exactly a full tutorial. I may do that later though. But right now, we have to set this steel trap right here. Here's what you're gonna need. This is basically it. One, gloves, and you need gloves for a couple reasons. One, so that all the scent doesn't get on your trap, and two, just in case you get, you know, your finger smashed in there, you're not exactly gonna go around without a finger. If you wear gloves, your finger's less likely to get chopped off. But now we're gonna dig our trap bed right here. So let's get some of this big stuff out of the way. And I've decided I want to make my trap right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start digging it. And we're in really soft sand, so that makes my job a whole lot easier. Definitely makes my job a whole lot easier. Whenever I used to trap, I'd do it like out in the woods. But now that we're in this kind of sandy soil, it's gonna make it a ton easier. And I love trapping in this kind of area because it is so easy. Keep making our bed, our trap bed that is. And right here, that's about good. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come on up here. I'll get a little closer. We're gonna set this trap. Now setting the trap, it's not too hard. I mean, usually I use my feet, but for today I'll try to use just my hands. Two years ago, I have a video on YouTube. I got my hands stuck in one of these and it was not pretty guys. And I didn't have gloves on then. That was before I used gloves. But you just gotta set it down and then you're gonna get this. And then there we go, there we go, okay, okay. And then we're gonna lift the trap pan over it. And there we go, that is the trap set. I'll set it off for you just so you can see what happens. Here's the trap, it's in the ground. Here's my hand. And guys, I mean, it really doesn't hurt that bad. And that's where a lot of people actually get confused. Like all the people that don't trap, they're like, oh, traps are so dangerous, they're built to break legs. They're not built to break legs. If they were built to break foxes' legs, then I would be hurting right now. But my hand bones, they're about the same size as a fox's leg bones, and I'm perfectly fine. Like, I can still move my fingers. If I sit here for a while, my fingers would probably go numb, but as of right now, it really doesn't hurt, guys. It's just latched on there. And that's exactly what the trap is built to do. Just hold me there until the trapper gets back to it. But now I'm gonna go back over here and reset it again. Now I have to drive my stake down into the ground. That way, whenever I do catch a fox, it's not just gonna run away with my trap. Well, that didn't feel good. Let's keep going. Now that my steak's in, I'm gonna put a little dirt right in there and I'm gonna get it right here to where my, my thing can fit flush right there with the ground. Ah, oh, 
And so right there, it did go off, but I actually set it back in the ground. I set the trap and everything. It's back in the ground, and now it's bedded properly. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this dirt that I started with to begin with, and I'm going to shake it over it, just like this. That way, now it looks like, well, nothing's here at all. It looks just like it was before I started, and that's exactly what you want it to look like. Now, I'm going to put a few sticks right here where I don't want him to step. I'll put a few sticks, put some sticks back over here, and put some on the back. So come right over here, just a little bit more. And that right there, we're good, guys. We're good right there. We're done. And so I'll bring you over here to the set to show you what it looks like. It's supposed to look like, you know, something's came down here. It's supposed to look like a mouse has been here. And to me, that's kind of what it looks like. And so with these sticks placed like they are, here's what we want it to do. We want it to come in, step its left foot here, then it's right foot right there. And right there, that's where the trap is. And what's really cool about this is in order for the fox to see down in the hole, he has to be right here on top of the hole, which right below it where his foot would be, that's where the trap is. And that's really how we target him to make his foot the size of a quarter land right there on our trap. So now all I've got to do with this trap is put some bait in it, put a little scent on it, maybe some fox pee or something like that, and we should be good to go. This set should be working as soon as we leave. Okay, so now I've actually been informed that the fox, it did did it almost get a chicken? It did get a chicken. It got the chicken and whenever my neighbor went out with the stick, he just, you know, figured one was enough and then the fox just ran away. But the fox actually did get a chicken. So now we're already down one chicken and that makes 24 that the fox has gotten off. But because the fox is out, we're actually going to do a little physical manipulation to make sure these chickens don't jump out of their cage. Because re recently, you know, their chickens, they've been just flying out of the coop. And that's not good, because if they jump out of the coop, the fox will get them. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to be clipping some of their wings, just the feathers, that way they can't fly out of the coop. And we do have a special guest, Mammy. What's up, Doc? But to clip their wings, it's good to have two people, so, you know, Mammy's going to Mammy's gonna help me here. So I'm going to go on in here, get into the chicken coop. Hopefully they don't try to eat me. Oh, Patricia! Now what I have to do is I have to grab a chicken... Hand it to Mammy, and then I'll cut their feathers, right? So first, I have to try to get a chicken. That's not going to be easy, okay? Like, I'm just... It's not going to be easy. I'm going to have to corner one, and they're probably all going to go crazy, too. So first, I guess we'll start off with this black one. Okay. Okay, we caught one. We caught a chicken. Here you go, Mammy. Here's the chicken. Now, you just spread its wings out for me. Just right through there, right? The lobster. There we go. And then we'll come right through here. Is that enough or do I, should I go more? That's good. Now just let that chicken go over there. And then I'll put them up by the end of the night. And there's one chicken clip wings clip. Now here we go. Let's get the second one. Who is the second victim? Well, I say, I say whichever one I can get in the corner. Hopefully this white one though. I'm not trying to. See, like that. They can fly with all their feathers. Come on, Patricia. I don't... Okay, we got Patricia. Here is Patricia. She kind of looks like Mammy, honestly. Don't she? Kind of got the gray hair. And there we go. That's good. See you later, Patricia. And right now, guys, I'm going to set the camera down. That way I can actually grab these chickens because it is not easy right now. There he is. Now we'll get this guy. You ain't scared of me. You ain't scared of me. Let's go, buddy. <laughs> Got him. Ah! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. God damn heavy. Yeah, they're a big old chicken, ain't it? Oh. And there we go. That's the last one. Let me see. Him. Let me see how good he can fly now. Okay, good. He can. And there we go. We're done, Mamie. No, it looks it looks like something pretty sketchy's been going on here. But I swear, guys, we just been cutting some feathers. <laughs> Mamie's got her little rainbow jacket on. It's kind of chilly out here. A little bit. It's probably why the fox is out. Needs something to make some body heat. Try to keep them feathers out. No. Uh, maybe the fox will smell that. 
try to tie her in. Oh, good idea, Mammy. I'll take some of those feathers and go put them around the trap. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, let's do it. Okay, good idea, Mammy. I'll get some of these. Good idea, Mammy. Way to use your head, Mammy. Way to use your head. We're back at the first trap location. Right there's that trap. We're going to come back here, get about half the feathers, because we're going to use half the other half of the feathers for the other set, but we'll get about this much. We'll come over here. We'll just lay them down on the ground. Then we'll stuff some down here in this hole, make it look like maybe, an maybe another fox has came through and maybe buried a chicken down in here. You know, just, yeah, that's possibly what it, they may think it looks like. You know, just throw some feathers around here just to, that way maybe the fox, you know, just comes strolling down the road. It may be a sprint. Then those feathers will catch his eye and then he'll stop and see what's happening. And with the addition of these feathers right here, we may even get a bobcat because bobcats, they really love feathers. They love anything that's just flowery and flat feathery and stuff. But that right there, guys, that is, that looks really nice. That just helped it that much more. You can never go wrong using chicken feathers with a fox that is specifically targeting chicken. Chickens. You can't go around there. Come back here, get the rest of these feathers. And honestly, I'd say this set, the set being right there, this one's probably more likely to catch the fox than the other one. Simply because the neighbor that has been having fox trouble, that's his house. It's right down there. Well, come right here just, just like that. We'll stuff a lot of this down in the hole though. Yeah, we'll stuff this right down in that hole. We'll get some of this off the trap itself. But yeah, just overall we're doing, this is really going to help it a lot. I feel. But this is the set. The trap is right there. That right there, that's exactly where we want him to come step his foot. And that right there, guys, we're good. That is perfect. This is a perfect set. It's right here on the side of this road. If he's coming down that way, possibly he'll smell it if the wind is right. He should come right over here, try to look down in that hole, get his foot stuck right in there. This is perfect. If you guys haven't already checked out the Breast Cancer Awareness merch already, I encourage you to consider it. This right here, this is the t-shirt we're hosting. Personally, it's my favorite t-shirt out of all of them right now. And we also have gray grippers, these right here. But what's really cool about both of them is you get this bracelet right here. It's the pink one right there, but it's got the KG on one side and it's got the Breast Cancer Awareness ribbon on the other. But also with both those pieces of merch is a percentage of the proceeds from both of them for the entire month of October is going to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. And this is super awesome because not only are you getting yourself a shirt, but you're also helping breast cancer awareness in general. So don't miss out, guys. Pick up your merch at kindlegrade1.com slash shop or link in the description. But right now, it is Saturday and it's time for the verse of the week. And I just want to say I'm sorry, guys. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm truly, I'm sorry. Because the last few weeks, maybe even the last few months, honestly, the verse weeks have not been good. Like, I've just, I'm, I've, I'll admit it, I've not been putting as much effort into it as I should. And you guys can probably tell it just as much as I can. But today is different. It's time for a change. And I even got notes for this week's, because it's a good one. Okay, I'm going to set y'all down on my skidding table right there. And we're about to get started on this one. Uh-oh. Chicken's going a little crazy right now. But anyways, the title for this one is God Knows What You Need. And the verse is from Philippians 4.19. My God will meet all needs according, uh, all of your needs according to his riches. Now we're going to start it off by saying that. We're going to start it off by saying that God will meet all your needs accor not ac according, no, pff, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm sorry. Let me read that again. God will meet all your needs, not according to your resources, but His. Yeah, God will. God's going to meet your needs, okay? And it's not exactly according to what you think your needs are. Okay, He's on one now. Hey, bud, can you just tone it down a little bit? Can you take it, take it down a notch, okay? Take it down a notch. Use your outside voice, not your morning voice. But with that, that's when problems can occur. And in this case, the definition of a problem is you trying to fulfill a need with something that has no ability of fulfilling that need. An example, let's say you just, you want to feel more liked by people. You want to feel loved. And in order to feel like that, you may be wanting other people's approval. You may be wanting more likes on Instagram, or maybe you're just wanting more people to talk to you. Like the verse says, God will always meet your needs. It may not always be the way that you think they should be fulfilled, but trust me, God will always fulfill them. And what's super good about this is that the only one that has what you need 
is the only one that truly knows what you need, and that's God. And this is kind of just a little bonus segment, but you may be asking, why doesn't God just remove the need in all? Because if there was no need, if there was no problem, then there would be nothing to remind you that He is what you need. And not only does God give what you need, but He is what you need. Okay, guys, I, I'll tell you right now, that's one of the best verses of the week we've had in a long time, and I bet you know it, too. And I just want to hear from you. Go down and tell me how you're feeling today. <laughs> but anyways, guys, if you, like, for real, if you want some breast cancer awareness merch, please go pick up some, because it's going to a good cause. And the more that we sell, the more that we get to give. But anyways, guys, I'll see you this Monday with another banger. Hey, Mom. Okay, bye. Hey everybody, this is Ben from Who's Your Back Outdoors. I watch Kimball Gray, and so should you. So don't forget, go over and hit that subscribe button, smash that thumbs up, and then go ring the notification bell. And we will see you next time.